I've always written even as a child but uh, obviously writing uh, writing for others is, is a different thing uh, to writing just for yourself or, or scribbling uh, on an old school exercise book and so on. Uh, I, I remember first being conscious of writing for others at school as I'm sure a, a lot of other writers uh, would remember too. Um, and getting praise for, for the short stories or poetry that I was writing then and, uh, and just taking that on into, into writing in my spare time as well, in my evenings. Uh, by the time I, I hit my teens, I was writing very regularly, mainly poetry. Um, the first time I ever really attempted uh, a serious short story, I was probably 21, uh, no, even probably about 19. Uh, and I actually did quite well uh, I published that in, in the Anglo Welsh Review uh, and that got me started really in, in terms of serious writing and seeing myself as somebody who could uh, could write maybe not professionally in terms of making a living from it but uh, seriously. From quite a young age I remember the first short story I remember reading and, and being very affected by uh, I must have been about um, nine or ten. Uh, my father had a collection of great short stories from around the world or something like that, an old, uh, an old hardback edition published in the twenties I think. And I remember just quite by accident taking that off the shelves and reading a story by Gorky. I think it was called 26 Men and a Girl and, uh, and it made a huge impact on me and I, I went back to that story over and over again uh, over the years. Um, and I think that's where I first discovered short fiction, you know, and, and first fell in love with uh, with storytelling um, in, a, in a kind of a more adult sense. Um, my father used to read us uh, Jack London stories when we were kids, and that that was very important too. Uh, I think now looking back, um, and I think and then. Uh, at university I discovered writers like Raymond Carver, Richard Ford, Bobby Ann Mason, Flannery O'Connor, you know that kind of American uh, line of short story writing uh, was again very important to me. Um, so the Russians, the Americans uh, and then when I came to Scotland to do my postgrad uh, I discovered people like Kelman, uh, Alan Spencer's short stories at that time. Um, Bernard McClaverty, you know, the short story scene in Scotland seemed much more vibrant than it was in England or Wales, uh, and that was that was quite inspirational, really. You know, the, it seemed in the 80s that many of Scotland's best-known writers were actually very happy to work with in the short story form. I think it's the avoidance of making big statements and uh, I don't like big statements in, in fiction or in film or any other uh, art form really. I think a uh, big abstract statement is to me is, is intrinsically uh, false and <laughs> kind of compromised. Uh, I think accurate statements about life or about human experiences and so on have to be small. If they're going to be accurate they have to be limited and small because uh, I, I think life and experience is a composite of small truths uh, and small uh, apprehensions, not uh, not big solving equations uh, as it were. And, uh, and even though there are many wonderful novels that, that don't fall into the trap of, of trying to make big uh, coherent statements about life or experience. I think I think the actual experience of, of reading a short form is, is closer to um, how life feels and, and how life happens to us. I wonder if it's the weight of tradition, you know, the, the great names of English in the English novel tradition, I think of uh, maybe contributed to that to some extent, although some of Hardy's stories are, are very fine.
and, and Dickens too, of course, wrote many uh, wonderful short pieces. But by and large, people teach and think of, of novels when they think of Hardy, Dickens, Conrad and so on, even though they did work in shorter forms. Um, and, and you're right, it's America and the continent really where uh, a kind of 20th century um, respect and love for, for short forms seems to have, have really endured. Um, the English tradition does seem to be more, more about the big novel. Uh, and I think that probably is a hangover from, you know, the Victorian sort of legacy of the, the great English novel. Yeah, so I think uh, it's, it's a bit of both, both I think. Um, certainly the, the seed for, for most of the stories tends to come from, from actual experience, you know, which then, so um, actually experiencing uh, a different place very often leads to a sense of story that grows out of uh, the experience of, of uh, visiting a new place, seeing a new culture, and so on, and the dislocations that come with that. Um, I think uh, it's certainly, I don't, I never self-consciously set out to set stories in, in different, different places, different cultures. Uh, I think it is simply that any dislocation uh, that you experience through travel is, is pretty much an analogue to the kinds of dislocations that the characters will feel uh, in, in probably any of my stories, regardless of where it happens. It's just that the uh, the extra dislocation that comes with uh, with cultural difference um, kind of helps that along. I think sometimes. And uh, a formative influence in in my life was uh, was Calvinism in. Uh, in my teenage years, and uh, so yes, yeah, left me with uh, a strong sense of uh, suspicion of my own uh, my own self and uh, loyalty to, uh, to to Calvinism or or any religion. No, but uh, but I do think it's left me with with an awareness of uh, human frailty, human fallibility, and and. Uh, I think, yes, it, it has, uh, it's, it's partly been a function of the fact that uh, I'm not very organised at getting my work out into, into the marketplace with journals and so on. Um, I, I tend to be better at motivating myself to submit work uh, to competitions just because I'm quite bad at, uh, at keeping track of where I've sent stuff and, uh, and getting myself uh, organised enough to, to send things off consistently. Um, and then I think when when you get a few prizes in, in big competitions it, it kind of has a knock-on effect and, and it encourages you to uh, to carry on with that, you know, and it's, it's certainly a, a boost to, to get recognised in a, in a big competition because uh, obviously then you're aware that your work has stood out from uh, uh, sometimes thousands of, of entries, so it is a good confidence booster. Yes, yeah, so I'd like to I'd like to do a collection uh, based more kind of homogeneously in, in in one country. I'd like to set a collection in South Wales, which is where I grew up. Um, Partly just because I'd like to, I don't particularly feel attracted to the idea of writing a novel, but I would like to experiment with working with a with a, a slightly more stable cast of characters and uh, working on a bigger scale in that sense, where uh, the stories could be pretty much self-sufficient, but allow me a little more scope to create dynamics. Um, and tensions that, that run out with uh, an individual story. I think that would be uh, quite interesting to, to explore, but uh, I would like it to be freer than, uh, than a conventional novel. Yeah.